first of all, thank you guys for being a part of this. Uh, the problem, the uh, intervention we're trying to look at here is more of using data to help us uh, improve student achievement. The focus of this is going to be on closing the gap. Uh, so what we've got here, kind of our vision statement, gap students outlining what they are. Over the last three years, these students have scored significantly lower than our white students on the EOCs. Uh, we'll use the kind of data from our school report card, EOCs, EOC scores from previous years, uh, to kind of measure where we're at and then identify how we're going to actually close that gap. Um, so, table of contents, what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, PLC agenda, we'll go over here in a second. Vision statement, which we, we already kind of introduced. We're going to look at the school report card and demographics, analyze the data, and then talk about uh, where we need to go from there. So, uh, we're going to analyze the data, close the gap with the student inter achievement interventions, and then kind of conclude and see where we uh, need to move to the front here. First, we're going to look at these three years' school report cards. We start with 2011-12, since that was the first year of EOC testing in the state of Kentucky. Um, so that just kind of shows the progression we've made from the origin kind of through 2013-14. Uh, how's it going to be used? We're going to look and see what we need to, uh, <clears throat> what we've learned where instruction is effective. We're going to identify areas we need to improve. Uh, we're going to evaluate different instruments that work, those that don't work. Um, how do we instruct and then develop a plan to kind of move forward? So demographics, this is kind of the breakdown uh, of our school in general, uh, male population, female, uh, our gap students right here identified um, our 50, 56 percentile in white, non-Hispanic, minority 44, and then 56 free reduced lunch. So you can kind of see where we're at uh, throughout the district. Here we go, we'll start 2011-12. Um, we've broken it down here from novice, apprentice, proficient, and distinguished. The colors are distinguishing our white students, our ECE with IEP, our free or reduced lunch with our African American students. So this is the origin, this is the first year of the testing. Uh, if you just want to go overall numbers, you can see that our definitely distinguished numbers are down. Uh, pretty even here throughout the apprentice and proficient, and obviously novice, especially in the area of the ECE with IEP, as well in uh, to the sixth. Move one year uh, removed from that, so this is our second year of testing. A uh, little fluctuation here in the middle, kind of a little bit more of a move towards some proficient. Because if we go back here, we actually had no proficient with our IEP uh, ECE students. Um, so we see some gains. Um, distinguished again, actually almost went down, especially when we talk about IEP. 2013 14, we, we kind of got a nice rainbow here. We've got an array of colors all across the board. Um, so you can definitely see some improvement from the original year through 2013-14. Uh, another breakdown I'm kind of showing you, this is our year by year, focusing just on the white students, kind of the fluctuation where we've gone uh, from novice, apprentice, proficient, distinguished. Definitely see a spike here with our proficient students. Here we get into our first group of our minority, our, uh, our gap students. Uh, again, we see a nice spike here, all right, a little more of a plateau early on, and definitely a sharp decline once we get over here to, uh, to distinguish. Second group, our free and reduced lunch, kind of seeing the same trend here, all right. And then last, really an area of focus in those three years, our ECE with IEP students kind of definitely need to see what we can do as far as uh, bringing that uh, Apprentice proficient area up to definitely see when we trip one over to the stage. So, what does that tell us? This year, um, first year, we had 24% of gap students in the novice, 47.5% uh, are score distinguished, no instructional strategies used. We weren't really kind of focused, we kind of were up in the air, hey, what are we going to do from here? How are we going to go um, moving forward? Here, we started to, to kind of implement some kind of these test taking strategies. Started looking at student exchange uh, as far as separate students into three groups based, based off of proficiency uh, scores. We definitely use the proficiencies throughout the year to kind of help identify who the gap students were and where we struggled at. 
Um, and then definitely teacher reviewed independently of each other. So we started to, to analyze, hey, well, what's the strategy you used? Um, what maybe helped your scores out? <clears throat> Why are your scores maybe not so good? Continue on, here's our breakdown of numbers. Uh, we've got a 6% increase in our GAP students uh, as far as the novice goes. Proficient and distinguished, we've got a 2.3% increase. So we can, we can see definitely a little progress is made. The, the last year, we kind of went over and started putting in everybody using a common assessment across the board. Uh, we looked at a uh, common course review of the EOC test, like what are kind of questions that maybe we need to pop up on there, what's the wording. Uh, we identified students who scored apprentice as sophomores, so we kind of knew going in, hey, these are students that maybe we can get up to that proficient and distinguished mark. We call them the EOC All-Stars. And then uh, throughout the year, meeting with the assistant principal, kind of going over those All-Stars, kind of motivated, hey, how can we get them just one step further? Continued, implemented our PLCs. This is when these became uh, kind of vital to our EOC success. Uh, this not only in U.S. history, Algebra II as well. All U.S. students used uh, Study Island, which was another intervention, an online program to kind of reinforce and start reviewing those materials throughout the course of the year in preparation for the EOC. Right here is our breakdown. So we see a 14% decrease of our novice students, all right, from the beginning of 2011-12 to 2013-14. And we see a 15% increase, okay, in our gap students as far as proficient and distinguished. So definitely starting to see some progress being made there. All right, what does it tell us? Obviously it matters. All right, if we can use this and we can use it effectively, um, then, then we apply it appropriately, we're gonna be able to kind of produce positive results. Uh, we're gonna be able to identify those students that we need to early on. And these diagnostic and proficiency assessments, uh, sometimes the question isn't where we want it to be, but however, we can use those scores to kind of help track our progress throughout the year. Uh, more of a, what minor adjustments can we make? Uh, this collaborative effort of coming together on a weekly basis, talking about instructional strategies, sharing ideas, uh, it is only gonna benefit us. Uh, use the annual state testing results to evaluate the previous year's plan. Did this work? Did this not work? <clears throat> Areas for improvement. Obviously, we, we need to continue to grow. We need to continue to train each other, talk to each other as far as uh, the instruction goes. We need to kind of maybe more identify these students at risk, uh, especially with, with certain difficulties they're having throughout the year. Um, intense instruction, you know, we talk about kind of going down, getting the student, helping pull them up a little bit, uh, meet them halfway, and then track the progress throughout the year. Uh, implement some kind of intervention uh, plan for them, uh, after school services, study sessions during lunch, so on and so forth, things that we've kind of already started to do here at Buck. Plan to raise, obviously, right here, professional learning communities continue to do what we're doing here today. Analyze the diagnostics and proficiencies. Um, talk about, identify patterns, things we notice. Did, did most students miss this question right here? If so, why? Um, look at the wording. Obviously, the interventions and collaborations are gonna be big as well. <clears throat> what are interventions we talked about? Uh, gotta identify who they're struggling. Uh, gotta notify the parents. Gotta put place uh, research-based interventions as far as, hey, we, we, we've analyzed the data, we, we, we see a trend here, this is the reason for the intervention. Um, instructional strategies, sim similarities and differences between things that we're doing in the classroom. Uh, we gotta summarize and note-taking, you know, where we can we cover a, a very dense, uh, broad spectrum uh, of information. We gotta be able to kind of condense that down to these students. Uh, reinforce the effort, provide recognition, you know, positive and negative. You know, people respond in different ways. Homework and practice, this is where our study island comes into place uh, as far as reinforcing, kind of reviewing those materials. Uh, here's some instructional strategies. You know, all things that we're doing, but obviously we need to continue to grow, get better at these. And that's it. That's where we are.